All right, folks, we're down 340 points. We were off 540 when the show began. Maybe we'll do something here. Uh, remember, uh, the market has been all over the place. Uh, the question, though, is as we head into the final hour of trading, we're starting to put together would-be buys. Uh, you don't have to pull the trigger today, but certainly there's an old adage on Wall Street, buy low, sell high. It's low and been getting lower. Melissa Armel is with us. She's from Stock Swoosh. Jonas Ferris is gracious with his presence once again. Melissa. Uh, have you bought anything in the last couple of things in the stock market? Not in the stock market. I will tell you right now, I think we still could be lower. And even today, we're trading down after that huge uh, after that huge rally yesterday. What I wanted to see was follow through this morning and a gap up. Instead, we gapped down. And when we didn't hold the low right into the open the first five minutes of the day, I said, we're, we're going to close red today. I don't know where we end up. You, we got an hour left. But you left. bought some dresses this week. I did. Were they on sale? <laughs> I did buy, do some shopping <laughs> yesterday. We're, we're, were, were they on sale? They were on sale. It was right. 50% off yesterday right. in tons of places. So I don't know if you've noticed there's a 20% off sale on the stock <laughs> That's market. What I'm That's the point I was working on. It's so amazing to me that people, when they see a dress off 50% or that sweater off 50%, they rush out and buy. Of but when the market's yeah. under pressure, they start Hope to sell wrong. great stocks at lows. And I know so many times, because I've been dealing with them for 30 years, they ultimately regret it. What would you be looking for in terms of a buy list? Not to buy today, obviously, but something that, okay, ultimately, you got to own this. Okay, I've done more buying for clients this week than I have in several months now. Uh, but I've been sitting on a lot of cash and long-term bonds. I'm slowly moving those in. Now, look, I still think NASDAQ 5000 is a possibility, but I could be wrong. And the most the stock market's going to go down is 50% in the worst depression. So you should have a plan to basically buy on the way down. I'm looking at, right now, into European stocks, more trouble there than here, which actually makes the stocks cheaper. I am not adding tech stocks. I think it's too soon there. Still focusing on value here, not the bargains of a lifetime anymore, but okay. Um, sort of getting out of like utilities. I'm starting to look at a foreign emerging market bonds, non-US denominated. You can do all this through ETS very easily. So dub half a dozen. Anything your, domestically based, any US companies. I mean, I, I'm buying, you know, I buy the value ETFs, right? now. I'm trying to stay out of growth. There's a little too, you know, I want to stay out of the FANG stocks and all that. And it's hard to do that. They've crept into a lot of holdings that I've had with uh, telecom funds right. where they reset to the indexes. But I think, again, you don't want to go all in yet because Right now, 20% down is a very unstable level. We were talking about this earlier. I could see the market being up 25% a year, and I could see it being down 20. And no one really knows because we don't know if we're going to have a recession or not. But you should have a plan to increase your allocation right. on the way down. Melissa, so many people, though, come on the show, and they want to see certain levels taken out on the upside, which okay. is fine. Uh -huh. But essentially what that means is that, you know, the Dow's rebounded 3,000 points. And so while, we, while picking the absolute bottom, bottom is folly, we are talking about maybe buying stocks significantly higher. Is that the right way to do it? Listen, I'm all for buying strength. You short weakness or sell weakness, you buy strength. And the problem is right now, the strength, no strength in the market, no buying has followed through. And that was, you see that with the rally we had yesterday and the versus today. It's like a, we just did a sandwich today. Like yesterday was the cheese and today was the bread. Two red days in between a green day isn't good. So I'm saying wait a little bit unless, like he was saying, you want to be a long term, week, you don't though, care when you get in, get everyone's in. Everyone's back from the holiday. Days, um, you know, some real players are out there with big mm -hmm. money, particularly folks who keep underperforming. Mm -hmm. They start to put their money to work. Where do you think they're going to be looking? But I don't see that yet. Those big players aren't there. The market would be up farther. That's what I'm saying. You'd see follow through when you have institutions coming in and buying the market. That's when you see the gap ups. Yeah. That's when you see the follow through. That's when you can go after it you know, as we had an the individual. Dow point day in I know ever, we just right? retraced fifty percent <laughs> of it though today, and we're we're near breaking the low from yesterday, and that's twenty one twenty one right. seven. And if we break that, Let's leave fall. it there, folks. The CP effect worked a little bit. We were off 540 <laughs> points. We we cut off 200 points. We brought it back a little bit for Christina Partinevlitz. She's in for Liz Clayman. All right, Christina, I'm giving you the CP effect.